should I do? Because a lot of the times we just, okay, like give the 10% and then, you know, we're good. Or, you know, what I can afford. And I feel like um, we need to ask God for wisdom in everything that we do, especially with our money. Because our money is not our money, but it's God's money. And at the end of the day, like even um, when the young boy brought the fish and the bread to God, that's all he had. And yet Jesus used it to supply so many other people's needs. And most of the time, he uses us to supply one another's needs. Mm -hmm. All the time, we are used to feed and clothe one another through the Lord. And it's powerful Amen. that we need to be that channel of prosperity for someone else. Amen. You know? And uh, this is what I want to read. And I find it so beautiful because he realizes... And I feel like, although he's saying he's not wise, he's wise for asking the Lord what to do. Yeah. I feel like we are wise when we think we're not. Because we humble ourselves and allow God to exalt us. Yeah. And he says here, two things I'll ask of you, O Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. And that first part already had me at, we think, oh gosh, I can't give this last bit of my money because what am I going to eat? That's a falsehood. That's a lie. Because the Lord is our provider. And he says, give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. And I find people who have too much and people who have too little are both miserable. But the Lord himself, when he gives us too much, we should give away until we're, we're neutral. And the people that are poor on the streets, I know that God provides for them every day when they find him. And we know this from testimonies of people that we meet on the streets. Yeah. And he knew, this person right, he knew that I can have everything, but if I do not have my daily bread, I'm not getting fed. And that is so important that what we give to God will actually feed our souls and our spirits. Because we feel the resignation of God whenever we give him what truly belongs to him. Because we ourselves don't know how to build, but when we give it to God, he makes the cement. We give him we give him our cement and we give him our water and he makes the cement for us. And it goes on further to say, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. And so what I find so powerful is that even in giving, and it's not just money, because when we talk about offering, we are supposed to offer ourselves as living sacrifices. So everything we do, we should offer to be burnt and allow it to be purified. Amen. Because everything we give can be purified and cleansed. Because we cannot give something to someone that is not pure. Because it is not from the Lord. Especially, like, I remember, and this is a, a testimony of mine, I remember that I was in a cell group, and this guy came up to me, and was like, we're going on an outreach with you, and I joined I was like, of course, I'm going to watch. I love going on outreaches. And we went out. Oh, I, I must just keep my emotions for <laughs> my father. And we went out and he bought like clothes and food and I was so excited. I was like, yeah, we're going to go talk to people and tell them about the love of Jesus. And I remember we got there and the person said, oh, are you still on tip for the one guy? And I was like, what? And then um, I said to them, um, he just gave them the stuff and was about to leave. And I was like, um, okay, anyone could have done that. Are we going to pray for them? And his reply to me was, they won't understand anyway, they don't speak English. And wow. I did it. I was just like, oh Jesus, help me. Because <laughs> rich people can do that. And God says, even do not let your one hand know what your other hand is doing. Because then it is for men to see. And even the Pharisees, God says, they love praise more for men than from God. So I feel like when we offer, even at church, when we go out, everything we do is an offering to God. Everything. And our life is just in front of Him. We are completely naked and exposed before Him. So why should we try and just allow other people to see? Because their opinions, their very brain is temporary right now. Yeah. But God's opinion and love for us is eternal. So why not work towards a more permanent relationship? Amen. And I feel like we have so much more to give than our money to God. Mm -hmm. But He knows our hearts when we give. And He also knows our hearts when we cannot give. Because yeah. we're not supposed to give in guilt or withhold because of guilt. I feel like sometimes we don't even give because we think our money is too little, you know? And yeah, I just, I don't know, can I pray? I just feel like I'm so just... Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much for who you are and just what you're doing inside of us, how you're stirring each of us as individuals. 
And I pray, Lord, that as we give this offering, Lord, those who can give, those who can't give, Lord, that you would allow us to give it with such a cheerful heart. And that we would be able to get visions of what you're going to use our money for, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that the kingdom of heaven is so rich, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that you just allow us to be a part of the kingdom when we give, when we offer that we know how pleased you are with us. So, Father, I just thank you for your peace in this place that is so tangible and present. And I pray that you would show us how to become living sacrifices, how we can offer ourselves to anyone at any time for your kingdom, Jesus, not for men to see, but for your eyes, Lord, which are always upon us. So I thank you. Thank you, Hannah.
the seed was in the bottle. Remember this one, I'm going to share with you as young people. In the book of Exodus, when God told Moses to move, Moses said to him, God, show me your glory. Which we sang some of the music tonight, and it spoke about, God, we just want your glory. Show us your glory, God. Okay. And Moses said, he said, God, show me your glory. Because if you don't show me your glory, I'm not moving. Mm. Yeah. I'm not moving. So ultimately, God said, okay, Moses, uh, okay, Moses, I will show you my glory. Mm. And then the Bible says he put him in the cleft of a rock. Amen. Yeah. And he said, I will pass you. Okay. Because he says to him, he says, because you cannot see my face and live. Yeah. But if you see my back, that's what you'll see. And you will see my glory. Because Moses said, show me your glory. So it means when he sees God's back, he's going to see God's glory. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so? Mm -hmm. But here's the point. If God's literally saying to Moses, you cannot see my literal face because you will die, exactly in the same virtual chapter, a couple of verses before that, the Bible says that Moses met with God and spoke to him like a friend face to face. So why didn't Moses die? So we have a problem. Okay? So what was God saying? Now you must watch this for a minute. What was God saying? Can you cut it? Can you cut it? <laughs> if you now watch it here. So he says to Moses, Moses, if you see my face, you cannot live. Amen. Now, if you look at each other, what do you actually see? Her face? But what do you see? You see where she's coming from. Yeah. You see where she's coming from. Amen? You got that? Mm -hmm. But if you see her back, what, a, oh, what do you see now? Where she's going you see to. where she's going to. <laughs> That's good. And God's ultimate glory is His Son, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. He's the glory of God. Mm -hmm. He's His, his total <coughs> in covenant of what glory really is. He's our Lord and Savior. And what God was saying to Moses, He says, Moses, listen. Yeah, I want you to see my back. Uh, because where, where you come from, there you cannot live. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and too much of God's people live from where we've come. come you can't live where you come. You must live where you're going to. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And God says, so I don't want you to see my face. Because then you're going to see where I'm coming from. And yeah. you cannot live there. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But if you see my back, you will see my glory. Wow. You'll see my goodness, my provision, my love. You'll see all that. But you know why? He said, Moses, I believe at that very stage there, Moses had a revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because he said, I see your glory. I see where you're going to. I see wow. where you're going to. Wow. Young people, don't look back. Yeah. Unless it's something you can learn by. Yeah. That's going to help you to look forward. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Dr. Martin. That's so good. I can have more to say. We do a Bible school right through the doctorate. Wow. Yeah. That's good. I am actually not preaching today.
and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I, I want to just pull out that word, breathe, real fast. It was a prophetic action. It was a, it was a shift in the atmosphere. So when Jesus went and he came into the situation where he was about to leave and he was about to shift their own perspective of ministry and life and give them authority, he prophetically shifted the atmosphere around them. And I say that to say this, God is about to prophet, God is about to shift the atmosphere around you. He is about to shift the very thing that you are carrying. He is about to take and he is about to, when you walk into the room, the tangible presence of God is going to be on the inside, was, but now will be manifested on the outside. Because the atmosphere when you receive, that word receive means to take. Mm. That word take when you break it down means to steal. If you steal something and you hold on to it, you possess it. Yeah. We have a, a rule in America that possession is nine tenths of the law. That means no matter mm -hmm. if I gave Hannah something or gave Vanilla something, that means if the police comes and I say she stole it, she has it, it's nine tenths of the law, that means she's going to jail. She's in possession of it. And he says, take that thing, own that thing, and receive that thing, and be branded by that thing. Because I have now shifted the atmosphere around you to do what? To walk in miracle signs and wonders. I gave you the pure stream of heaven. Yeah. I gave you the very thing that was around me, and the only thing that was around me was heaven. The only atmosphere around me was heaven. That is why when I walked, he was saying it was prophetically, when I walked, the lame got up. When I walked, the deaf hurt. When I walked, the blinded eyes opened. When I walked, the lady with the issue of blood was healed just because she took something from me. And so when Jesus left this earth, he said, I shifted the very thing that was on the inside to outside. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. The very stream of heaven. And, 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 and when, when you what the picture that I'm giving is like a rip current in the ocean where two waves, where two currents come and it goes and it goes out. Is that the yeah, yeah. right? When he breathed, he, he took you and he put you and sent you out into the very spirit, into the very reality of heaven. That's what he did. And he says, wait, wait. Are you willing to wait to let the thing that he shifted inside on the outside come and then marinate around you? Wow. Waiting is warfare. Yeah. <laughs> I wait. That's why in Exodus 14 and 14, I think it says, your Bible says to keep silent and hold your peace. Why is that? Because if you keep silent and you know that the battle is the Lord, that waiting, that time of waiting begins to produce the anointing. Wow. That anointing begins to teach you in the waiting so that when you finally step out in the thing that has shifted the atmosphere that you're walking in, miracles take. You don't have to try. You don't have to do anything. You walk into the store, and they end up giving you the thing that you went to the other store that was 7,000 rand. That's the waiting of God. 
You might go to 10 different stores, but in the inside, God has begun to turn that thing and shift that thing. And when his spirit breathes upon it, someone said, when he breathes upon it, then when you walk in, the whole atmosphere is shifted. Waiting is warfare. Rest is warfare. Yeah. I don't have to keep going and going and going. I just have to wait. Yeah. It says, wait until the Holy Spirit came. I can't remember the verse. But that, that also means when the authority came. You, you, so many Christians get beat up because they haven't received the authority yet in the natural and the spiritual. Mm-hmm. All right, let me give you an example. We read the Bible. And the Bible says that that the, that 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 we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We're blessed and we're healer of healing people and blah 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 blah. But until we wait for that to manifest in our lives, we'll keep trying and we'll keep on getting defeated because we haven't got the authority to walk in it yet from heaven. Yeah. yeah. God has not breathed upon that word. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's good. <laughs> when this store is closed, unless I have the key, I don't have access into the store. I can have a million rand in the bank, but until I get the key, turn on the machine, turn on the register, and someone takes my order and I pay them, it doesn't do nothing for me. Yeah. Can I say something quickly? Go. Yeah. Just to be for now. The scripture we quote so easy as Christians. We say faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Mm. Yeah. That word, word, is not a logos, it's right now. Yeah, yeah, come on. So you can read the scripture till you believe the place. Yeah. It won't necessarily work for you. But when it becomes a rainbow word, a revelation yeah. word, then you just put me off to something now. Go ahead. It works. Okay. It works. I'm not getting up. That's all. <laughs> Look inside and to rest on the inside of what was manifested. Yeah. 
So if you look at your salvation, if you look at what God's done, the love, the mercy, the grace, the blessings, all of that, the word, and you rest in it, and you don't neglect it, it will be confirmed to us by those who heard it. What does that mean? I'm walking down the street and someone says, what is that thing that's different about you? Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. We needed to buy a pram and a car seat on Saturday, but sometime this week. And so, which was very crazy because the baby was supposed, to, it was before the, we found out the news on Thursday. So baby was supposed to come three weeks and we're just, we're waiting, we're waiting. We go to all these stores, and they end up telling us that it's going to cost us X amount of money. And in our spirit, we knew that this is too much, this is not in our budget, but God has something better in store. Mm -hmm. And we wanted a particular pram and car seat. So we're about to give up, and I said, babe, let's just go to macro. We go to macro, the car seat that we wanted was on sale. And then they knocked down another thousand rand. And we got the car seat and the pram, and in a few days later, the booster off on the 3,000 rand brand new. Sure. Which is unheard of. Yeah. For a Greco whatever travel oh. system that we have. But it's unheard of. You at least spend 4,500 rand. Mm. And so, what is that? That is other people confirming the salvation on the inside of us. Wow. Because their spirit, something confirms in them. When we went back to the first store yesterday or the day before that we looked at this, said it was going to cost us 6000 I said, no, I got it for under three. And she said, God must have favored you. Wow. Yeah. But I like this part right here in verse 4. God also testifying with them both by signs and wonders and by various miracles and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Mm. When God gives you something, when you receive the Holy Spirit, it's in his word that he must testify. That word testify means to break the silence. It means to demonstrate. It means to crack open and bring it wide. Think about that. Amen. Crack open and bring it wide. When he testifies, <laughs> he breaks the situation open yes. and he expands it for his glory to be manifested. Yes. And he's going to make it a sign and a wonder. Amen. You don't have to make it a sign and a wonder. Yeah. Your Bible says that he will make it what? A sign and a wonder. Faith is like blood. I don't have to produce faith. Mm. I have to rest in my God. Wow. I have to rest in the Word. And as I rest in the Word, and as I rest in God, more faith is produced, and more miracles, more signs and wonders are produced. And He testifies it through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you an assignment this week. Find the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your Bible and begin to study them. Because if you want to see miracle signs and wonders and God produce on the earth, you need to know what they are. Mm. How, can you, how can you use a gift if you don't know them? Yeah. How can you use a gift if you don't even know where to find them? Mm. And so many times we hear about the gifts of the Spirit but we never know what they are. One of them are the working of miracles. <coughs> bring it down, bring the gifts of the Spirit down to practicality. Mm -hmm. If you can cook, that's a miracle. <laughs> Trust me, it's a miracle. Some people can't drive. It's a miracle that they get from A to B. Look at the gifts and make it. It's true. It's true. 
I'm sensitive to his heart, if I'm after his heart, no matter what happens. Even Abram, when he left to go into the promised land, there was, he brought Lot with him. Even though God said, leave everything behind, it was still accounted to him for righteousness. Because he stepped out in faith. Why? Because he loved God. So if I can tell you anything tonight, shifting the atmosphere, God shifted the atmosphere in your life because you love him. It's not because he had you, it's not because he wants, it's because simply because you love him. Yeah. And because he loves you and you love him, you're set up for miracles. You're set up for victory. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And if you just take hold of that thing that God's called you to, take hold of the Holy Spirit and let him teach you in the anointing, like Dr. Marius was saying, you will keep moving forward because you'll be after his glory. don't try. I just love. Mm. And when he tells me, I step out. Mm. Amen. Amen. So why do we have to pray? And when you hear what I'm going to say to you out of scripture, it will blow your mind and you understand why we have to pray. It is incredible. And it's out of the scripture. Wow. wow. It's out of the scripture. I'll make your appetite. Let me say. The only person that has authority upon this earth is a Body of flesh, full of the spirit. That's why demons have been God authority, because they do not have a body. They are a spirit. Yeah. That's why if you are born again, you're in the flesh, you have the spirit of God, that's why we can cast them out. Yeah. And they have to go. Because yeah. Yeah. we have authority. But they don't. That is why they need to get hold of a body in order to practice authority. Uh, Even in the garden, Satan had no authority because yeah. he didn't have a body. So he speaks a smack to lend him his body so he can take the uh, You and I have authority that you understand with the your mind. Given to us by God. Given to us by God. I'll teach you something you can read it from that will that will that will revitalize your prayer life. We'll literally revitalize it. And I'd love to just one moment, just one moment. And I'll come share with you.